What's up YouTube? Welcome back, my name's Tony and this is the third and final part of my mix breakdown for the single Faith and Gold by I Need Mana. In this video we'll be talking about how I mixed the vocals for the single. So I'll mention right off the bat that this single was actually one of Clayton's first attempts at coming out and being a lead singer on a track. In all the years I've known him he's done some amazing background vocals, some screaming, growling kind of stuff, but he's never actually been the front man. So this was a new experience for him. So I've got about 23 tracks dedicated to uh, various vocal things here, so why don't we just dive right in. Right off the bat, you can see that I've split the vocal part into uh, the verse and the chorus section. I wanted to be able to process them differently, which is why I did that. So let's just focus on the chorus section here. So the first plugin I've got on my vocal chain is Waves Tune. That's Waves uh, auto-tuning plugin. So I don't always use auto-tune on my projects, only where it's necessary. For songs in this style, I find that the vocals need to sound superhuman. They need to be perfect. And so that's why we went for the tuning on this track. So right off the bat, whenever I use tuning software, I make sure that first and foremost, you get an amazing performance out of your singer. The tuning isn't meant to fix a bad performance. It's meant to enhance a great performance. So here's a section of the chorus with uh, no tuning on it and no effects whatsoever. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly, burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark So overall it's a little shaky in spots, but, uh, but it's a good performance. So here's the same section of song with the tuning applied. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly, burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark So really, the tuner doesn't have to do a whole lot. All it's there for is to tighten up the little human errors that happen in a vocal track. So when you look at the signal chain that I have for this vocal track, it can seem to be a little bit intimidating. There's a lot of plugins going on there. Personally, the way I like to mix with vocals is to put a lot of plugins on there that are all doing very, very little. I don't like to have one plugin doing a lot of the heavy lifting for my vocal sound. So right after the tuner, I've got a Renaissance EQ, just a two-band EQ. Um, it's got a 2.4 decibel boost at 10K to really bring up that top end, the air in Clayton's voice, and an almost five decibel cut at 163 hertz, just to get rid of some of that mud, some of that uh, low-end content that might be clashing with the bass or the kick drum or anything like that. So here is that section with no EQ on it. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly, burn from a spark And with the EQ. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly, burn from a spark so you can see right off the bat that brings up a lot of brightness in the vocals, a lot of life to them, but it also brings up a lot of unwanted sibilance. So the next thing I have in my chain is a Renaissance de -esser. Now in a similar fashion to that uh, EQ from before, I don't want this de to do too much heavy lifting. It's very easy with de to over-process something. With too much de on a track, it makes your s sounds sound like f. This one in particular, I've got the frequency registering at uh, 5.5K, and I've got it at a range of negative 2.6 decibels. So at the most, it's only taking off about 2.6 decibels above 5.5K. So here's that section of chorus with no de-essing. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. And with de-essing. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Here's once more without. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. And with. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Shiny. So you can see that definitely helps the sibilance situation, although it's not completely taken care of yet. But we'll come back to that in a bit. So after that de -esser, the next plugin in my chain is a Renaissance Compressor. So I've got that set as an optical compressor. I've got a very slow attack time at 13.7 uh, milliseconds and a quick release time at 46.9 milliseconds. And I've got a very gentle ratio at 1.75 to 1. So you want to be careful with compressing your lead vocal track. In fact, you want to be careful with everything when it comes to your lead vocal track. 
The human voice is one of the sounds that, that everyone in the world is the most familiar with because that's how we communicate. So when it comes to your mix, if you do anything to the lead vocal track that makes it sound unnatural, it'll jar people's ears a little bit. Now that includes, um, you know, over DSing, over EQing, over compression. So you want to make sure everything that you're doing on the vocal tracks is, is fairly gentle, but that it has the effect that you're looking for. So with this compressor, I've only got it set to take off maybe three decibels at the strongest point. So here's the sound of the track with no compression on it. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark And with compression. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark So that compressor in particular adds a little bit of tension to these vocals. It's squishing it down just a little more than I would usually go for. And to me that vocal just sounds like it's trying to burst through the compression, which I thought was fairly appropriate for this song. Now that compressor however did bring up a little bit more of that sibilance. As it kind of lowered the dynamic range of everything, that sibilance starts to peak up a little bit more. It was already still a little bit too much after that first de and that compressor just kind of uh, exaggerated it even more. So next to my chain, we've got another de the same kind, the Renaissance de -esser. This one's set a little more aggressively. It's at the same frequency, 5.5K, uh, and this time it's taking down about 3.8 decibels above that frequency. So here's the track without that de on it. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark And with it. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark There you go, so that's bringing that sibilance down into a manageable level. It's still a little bit too much, but we'll get back to that later. So, so far we've got five plugins on there. We've got the tuner, an EQ, two de and a compressor. Now that much of my vocal process at this point I would call the utility processing. That is not so much affecting the tone of the vocal track, but more so fixing the inherent issues that arise with any live recording of vocals. So here's the sound of it once again with none of those plugins on it. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark and with. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark Once more without. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme and with. Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark so, so far we haven't drastically changed everything, we've just leveled out the vocals um, to give us a good base to start coloring them with. So for that task, I brought up the Waves SSL G series plugin. Now I've mentioned before how I just love SSL plugins because they're really smooth in the top end. So what we've got going on here is a 2.4 decibel boost in the high shelf at about 9K. So that adds a little bit of extra high end and air to that vocal sound. And it also helps to even out the high end after those two de -essers. Then we've got a 2.2 decibel boost around 1K. That helps the uh, mid-range to cut through a little bit. Um, I like to be pretty gentle on the mid-range when it comes to lead vocals because too much and it'll sound just honky and nasally. Uh, but too little and it'll sound hollow. Lastly, I've got a 2.5 decibel cut at about 350 hertz just to uh, to take out some of that muddy low end to give the uh, you know bass and drums and everything else that's living down there more uh, more space. So this plugin also has a compressor on it. I've engaged that compressor at a ratio of 2.3 to 1. That's set with a uh, again a slow attack time, a quick release time, and it's set to take off maybe three decibels at the hardest hitting point. So here's that vocal track without the SSL. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Shining. 
with it. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark so you can hear that adds just a whole lot of color to it. Brightens it up in the high end and the compressor kind of squishes it down a little bit and brings everything just like right into your face. So here it is once again without the SSL. All right, next in line, we've got another Renaissance EQ. Again, this one's doing very little. It's somewhat acting as a tilt EQ. I've got a high shelf boost of uh, two decibels at 2.7K and a low shelf cut of three decibels at 185 Hertz. So here's the track before that plugin. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. And with the plugin. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Shining brightly burns from a spark. Once more without. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. And with. Shining brightly burns from a spark. Light up this home we left in the dark. So once again, the plugin itself is doing very little, but it really helps to keep focusing that sound. Now that sibilance is starting to get a little out of control again, but we'll come back to that. The next plugin in the chain is an instance of Waves Vocal Rider. Now I'm not using this to replace my usual amount of automation, but just to add a little bit more excitement to the vocal track. The way I've got it set is with the sensitivity right around the top of the level that the audio reaches in this plugin. Now I've limited the fader to only be able to move up and down by about two or three decibels. Now by setting it up that way, it helps to eliminate some of the louder peaks that might pop out even after the compression, but it also helps some of the quieter spots to push forward and really, you know, have a little bit of that extra riding intensity on it. So here's the track without that vocal rider. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark And with Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark Once again without Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme with. Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up. So the last plugin I have on this vocal chain is another Renaissance EQ. I kept saying we would get back to that sibilance, and this is when I got back to it. This is another one of those plugins that I probably threw on after considering the vocals mixed, but came back to it thinking that the sibilance was a little too much. So what we've got on that one is just a 2 decibel cut at 10k. So here's that section without that plugin. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark And with the plugin. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark Once again without Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme With Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark So that last two decibel cut was really all those vocals needed to drag that sibilance back down to where it needed to be. It's a pretty standard effect setup for a vocal. I've got a delay and a reverb happening. Um, so let's start with the delay. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark So it's a pretty crazy delay happening there. So what we've got going on is Wave Super Tap uh, 6. Now I'm still pretty unfamiliar with this plugin. I believe when I did this mix I had just gotten it and was kind of throwing it on everything and just seeing what stuck and this was one of the ones that stuck. So it looks like I've got six different delays happening here. Um, two of them are at a setting of two, two at a setting of six, and two at a setting of twelve. 
We've got the feedback set to uh, just keep on trailing on and on. Here's that vocal sound with no delay. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from the spark Light up this home we left in the dark And here it is with the delay. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from the spark Light up this home we left in the dark Right away, your first impression of that might be there's too much delay while he's singing and not enough while he's not singing. Well, I thought so too. So what I did for this track is I added on a Renaissance compressor right after the delay. So this is a little trick that I like to use when I want to have a heavily delayed lead vocal track, but I want to keep the delay out of the way of the vocals. So what I do is throw a sidechain compressor after the delayed plugin that's being triggered by the raw vocal sound. So this one in particular, I've got at a pretty heavy ratio of 6.75. Um, it's set to take off between 12 and 13, oh, it looks like up to about 15 decibels of gain reduction while it's active. I've got a very, very quick attack time at 0.93 milliseconds and a long release time of 1,094 milliseconds. Here's the delay track soloed with that compressor active. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining bright, shining burn from a spark, spark Light up the stone we left in the dark So you hear how when Clayton is singing, the compressor is squashing that delay down so that you can barely hear it at all, and as soon as he stops singing, the delay comes back up. So let me play that for you in context. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from the spark Light up this home we left in the dark Now I've still got that pretty low for a, a more subtle effect but you can hear how that effectively keeps the delay out of the way of the vocals until the vocals are out of the way and the delay has time to breathe. So once I had that delay sorted out, I've sent both the delay channel and the main vocal channel to a reverb. I like doing it that way because you can kind of enhance the size of the space of your reverb by having the delays in there. So it sounds like a much bigger reverb or a much bigger space that the vocals are in, but you don't have to have a hugely big reverb or a hugely long reverb tail to get it to sound that way. So the reverb I decided on for this channel is one that I don't use so often anymore. It's by Martin Eastwood and it's called Mverb. I believe this was a freeware plugin that I got years ago before I could afford all the Waves plugins that I have now. So very basic UI on this thing and uh, I've got that set to be kind of a medium room. Um, it's a little bit boxy sounding on its own. Um, here's just that verb on its own. I thought that was the reverb on its own, but I guess the delay was in there too. A lot of times I'll add an EQ or a compressor or something like that after my reverb channel on the lead vocal, but uh, I didn't do that this time. So here is the vocals, the vocal delay, and the vocal reverb all soloed. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark So that puts the chorus vocals into a pretty nice space. So here's the sound of just the vocals with none of the effects in context. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme Shining brightly burn from a spark Light up this home we left in the dark and here's that same vocal sound with the delay and reverb. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Shining brightly burn from a spark. Light up this home we left in the dark. Here's the vocals once again with no effects on them. 
sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. And Shining brightly, burn from a spark. Light up this home we left in the dark. I'll always remember one of my old mentors when I was coming up in this business telling me that when it came to vocal reverb and effects, what you want to do is dial in the sound that you're happy with and bring it up to the point where you can hear it and back it off by two decibels. I always think about that when I'm processing my lead vocals. Unless you're going for an over-the-top effect, it doesn't need to be right in your face. You can keep the, uh, the reverb and the delays sunk behind everything, barely noticeable, and it has a massive effect on helping the vocals pop right out in front. So there's quite a few backup vocals going on through this track. We've got uh, three different harmonies through the chorus and some doubling going on as well. Clayton and I recorded all the parts for each of the choruses and then stripped them down a little bit as we got through the mix. So in the first chorus there's harmony but very little doubling. In the second chorus there's a little bit more harmony and a little bit more doubling. And in the third chorus it's pretty much everything that we tracked. So for the harmonies I didn't really do a heck of a lot of processing to them. I think any of the harsh EQing that I did was taken care of either on the board or uh, on whatever preamp I used on the way in. So I'm not going to go over these in too much detail, but I will throw up a screenshot of all the uh, plugins I put on the three backup vocal tracks. And here they are soloed. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. Stars lit like lanterns with a flicker dim. So you can see that for the most part it's just some light EQing and some heavy DSing. Backup vocals are the kind of thing you really need to make sure that they are lined up nice and tight with the lead vocal track. But even when you do that, the S sounds and a lot of the plosives, if you have multiple backup vocal tracks, can really start to add up. So cutting those out definitely helps the background vocals play a little nicer with the lead vocals. So with those three backup vocal tracks, what I did do is send them to an auxiliary bus. I like gluing backup vocal parts together with a nice compressor and slamming it quite a bit more than I would with uh, a lead vocal track. So in this instance, I've got a CLA-76 blue stripe. It's got a medium fast attack time, a medium quick release time, a ratio of four, and it's set to take off about five to seven decibels of uh, gain reduction. So here's that first line with no compression on it. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. And with compression. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. And I find that just helps to glue everything together a little nicer. Take those three separate parts and squish them down into one part. So next on that chain, I've got a Waves Vocal Rider. Unlike the one I put on the lead vocal, this one I am kind of using to replace the automation that I would normally do. So I've got the fader set to ride fast, and I've got about a 12 decibel spread that the fader can move around in. Here's the sound of it without the vocal rider. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. And with. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. Without once more. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. And with it. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. That helps even things out quite a bit and keep it a little more up front. So here's just those harmony vocals and the lead vocal track soloed out. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. Stars lit like lanterns with a flicker dim. And here's that section in context. There's a calm to the water now. So lastly on that round of backup vocals, I've got a reverb on there. Lots of times I'll have a pretty big reverb on my background vocals. In this mix that wasn't so much the case. I've got a pretty short reverb, kind of just a roomy sort of sound. And I'm using Waves True Verb for that. So I've got that set for a decay time of 1.3 seconds. And I brought out quite a bit of the low end on that reverb right in the plugin. So here's how that sounds on its own. 
There's a gun in the water now, I think we can swim. Stars lit like lanterns with a flicker dim. So you can hear it's a pretty short reverb, mostly uh, early reflections. So here's the background vocal bus soloed with no reverb. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. And here it is with the reverb. There's a calm to the water now, I think we can swim. So pretty subtle sits way in the background, but it just helps add a little bit of ambience to those background vocal tracks. So our second round of background vocals is more of a almost more of a double tracking sort of thing, but with a lot more energy and grit to it. So here's that part soloed out. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Shining brightly, burnt from a spark. Light up this home we left in the dark. The EQing on these tracks is a little more detailed than the last one. Got a high pass filter at uh, about 130 on each track. We've got a mid range boost around uh, just under 500 on the one and just over 500 on the other. And we've got a high mid dip at uh, 4.2k on the one and 3.4k on the other. That dip would kind of just help keep these background vocals out of the way of the guitars and the lead vocal and everything. The mid range boost would just be to give them some, some presence, help them cut through the mix. But most of the processing for that happened on the bus that I sent them to. So once again, I've got the uh, CLA 76 blue stripe on the bus for those tracks. Uh, it's pretty similarly set to the last one. I've got a medium fast attack, medium fast release, and a ratio of eight this time instead of four. So this one's actually set a little less aggressively than the previous one. It's set for anywhere between three and five decibels of gain reduction. So here's how the doubling part sounds with uh, nothing on the bus. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Shining brightly, burn from a spark. And with the compressor on there. So just like the last one, it helps to really uh, squish it together into one part rather than two separate parts. So after I put that compressor on, I kind of wanted to make these uh, doubling tracks sound a little more similar to the lead vocal track. They felt a little bit too separated for me. So in order to do that, I added on the same coloring plugin that I used on the lead vocal track, the SSLG series by Waves. I've got some pretty similar processing going on here. We've got a uh, We've got a 3.4 decibel boost in the high shelf around uh, 8.5k. We've got a massive 8 decibel boost in the mids around 2.6k. And we've got a 5 decibel boost around 500 hertz to give it that extra mids once more. We've also got a compressor happening on here. It's at a ratio of 3 with a uh, medium release and a slow attack. It's set to take off about 3, maybe a little bit more than 3 decibels per, uh, for, the, for the heaviest parts. And here's the background vocals without the SSL. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. And with it. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. So lastly on that background vocal bus, I've got a uh, vocal rider uh, set similarly to the uh, one on the previous bus and it is kind of replacing my automation there. So here's the sound of the bus without the vocal rider on it. And with the vocal rider. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Without once more. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. And with. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. So it's some pretty aggressive vocal riding, but uh, it does help to even it out a fair amount. So after all that, I've sent that background vocal bus to another instance of True Verb. This one's a little, uh, a little bigger and quite a bit darker. Um, here's the reverb just on its own. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. And with the backup vocal bus. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. So this one is set for more reverb and less uh, early reflections. Um, I've taken off a fair amount of the high end of that reverb and accentuated that with a re-EQ afterwards. With a high shelf or with a uh, high pass filter at about 10.3k and a big dip. Uh, 5 decibel dip at 2.1k. So here's the sound of those together, just the reverb. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Shining brightly, burn from a spark. 
and with the backup vocal bus. Sing like sirens with no reason to rhyme. Shining brightly burnt from a spark. So once again, pretty subtle, pretty behind the vocal track. So here's that section of chorus with everything we've discussed. There's a calm little water now. Like lanterns with a flicker again. The feelings electric ripples, oceans wide. Sing like sirens with no reason to ride. Shining brightly, burn from the spark. Light up this home we left in the dark. These dreams were built on faith and gold. So I try to do very little master bus processing, but I do find a little bit of compression goes a long way. So my weapon of choice for that is the SSL G Series Bus Compressor from Waves. So as I mentioned, a little bit goes a long way when it comes to master bus compression. Make sure you're very careful with that. So I've got this set to a ratio of 2 to 1. I've got the attack set at 10 milliseconds. I've got the release set to automatic. And uh, I've got the threshold set to take off an average of 2 decibels throughout the entire song. I guess it gets up to 3 in some of the heavier hits. But uh, like I said, a little bit goes a long way. So here's the sound of the chorus with no master bus compressor. There's a calm little water now, I think we can swim Stars lit like lanterns with a flicker dim And here it is with the master bus compressor There's a calm little water now, I think we can swim Stars lit like lanterns with a flicker again. Once more without it. There's a calm little water now. I think we can swim. And with it. Stars lit like lanterns with a flicker again. Well guys, that sums it up for the mix. After uh, this point, I sent it off to Clayton, who did his own mastering on this track. Maybe if I ask him nicely, we can get a mastering breakdown going at his place. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this mix breakdown and would like to see more like it in the future, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can know when I do post them, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks again, see you next time. Electric ripples, oceans wide Sing like sirens with no reason to ride Shining brightly burn from the spark Light up this home we left in the dark These dreams were built on faith and gold